In today's episode, we look at Hitman, a contract killer who was so useless that after two hits going wrong, he would work for free. The first contract, he missed the target completely. The second contract lived and got shot in the arse. He agreed to work for free on the third hit and shot the wrong target with devastating results. After pleading guilty to murder, he would then ask for a reduced sentence by turning super grass and ratted on everyone involved. Today, we look at the hapless hitman, Simeon Henderson. Simeon Henderson was a career criminal. He tried many times to make a living from crime because in his own words, he couldn't do anything else. At 27 years old, he was continually broke. He would have several arrests for petty crime, normally theft. His first major crime was when he owed child support so robbed a post office to cover the money. That put him straight inside, and while in prison he made connections with drug gangs, and on his release became a drug courier. He would make up to £2,000 a time, and it was something he was good at. That was until he would soon pinch £40,000 of a dealer's money, after the man he was dropping it off with had been arrested. Henderson, still holding the money, decided to pocket it, making it look like the police had it. The dealer was released later with no charges. The dealer's boss soon found Simeon and got the £40,000 back before he could spend it. They gave him a few digs, but he would then have to find an extra 10 k for being a miserable thief. If he didn't, the boss said he would bury him alive. With no way to get the money, he went on a string of robberies where he was put inside for robbing of bookies. Back in prison, everything calmed down. The debt he put himself in was forgotten after a turf war. While he was inside, the dealer boss fled the country. Henderson made criminal connections again and reinvented himself as a hitman. Henderson would let it be known he was for hire, but any gang worth their salt always use their own to do their hits. In 2008, he was offered a contract a hit by Hafiz Mohammed, who was part of the Castle Street gang. He ran a car hire dealers. Hafiz Mohammed, who was 43 years old, Golfan Khan, also known as Gogo, who was 44 years old, and Mohammed Safdar, 42 years old, were the three bosses who ran the car hire dealers. The bosses were involved in a turf war between gangs from Oldham and Bolton. This would involve gambling debts and drugs. The contract hit was to kill a guarantor of a man who owed them 30k. It's something they realised they were not going to get back. He needed to be made an example of because word was getting round. Henson was offered 7k to kill the guarantor. Henson got nervous and things became very real, very quick of the situation he was now in. He refused to kill him and offered instead to shoot him in the legs, which he said would be a better warning. Henson had managed to change the boss's minds in thinking they may get their money back. They all agreed. Henson was given a thousand pound. He also did not have a gun, so he was given an automatic pistol and would receive his money after the hit. In November 2008, Henson turned up at the car hire firm in Oldham. He checked the photo he was given and entered the premises. He approached a hatch window. His target was sitting at the back of the office. A receptionist approached the hatch, and before they could get to it, Henson pulled a handgun from his coat, put the gun through the hatch, leaned through, and opened fire on the target. He unloaded a full clip. Every shot went above the target and missed him completely. He ran out the car hire firm, and after a few hours, went back to Hafiz Mohammed. Henson gave Hafiz the gun and said he shot the target. He was given £2,000 and he'll get the rest when the death is confirmed. Several days later, there was a small paragraph in a newspaper about a shooting at a car hire firm. No one was hurt. Henderson was called back, and Aviz got into an heated argument with him. Henderson said he thought he had hit him because he fell to the floor screaming, and the muzzle flashes distracted him when he shot the gun. He could have swore he hit him, Hafiz told Henson to let things calm down and at a later date he can redo the hit. Only when it's confirmed he will get paid. (music) 
The next hit would be a man of a rival up and coming local gang who had been constantly bad mouthing Hafiz and the criminal operation. He branded him an old timer and said his time's up, but not that politely. He had been a major pain to Hafiz's operation. Hafiz Mohammed said he would not be disrespected. Henson was called back to see Hafiz. Hafiz said, I want that arrogant kid smoked. On March the 19th, 2009, Henderson was given the same loaded handgun and an old Fiesta and an address where the man lived. Henderson had been waiting a few hours in the Fiesta and spotted the target's car, a red BMW M3. He was on his own. The car pulled up on the man's drive. Henderson got out the Fiesta and ran up to the car. As the target was getting out of the car, Henderson ran up from behind and fired three shots. The first shot went through the rear window of the BMW. The second shot hit the target from behind and he fell to the floor. A third shot was fired but missed the target as he was falling. It hit the wall of the house. The target's girlfriend in the house opened the front door. Henson ran down the street back to the Ford Fiesta and drove off. The second target, the arrogant kid with the big mouth, was very much alive. He'd been shot in the arse cheek. Henson dropped off the Fiesta back at Hafiz Mohammed's garage and Henson called Hafiz to say it's done. The next morning Hafiz heard of a couple of taxi drivers about the kid from the gang. Someone shot him into his house. He's alive. He got shot in the buttocks. Hafiz was immediately on the phone to Henson and asked for a meeting. Later that day, Henson met up with Hafiz and Mohammed Safter. They said to Henson that the botched hits had caused them a headache for him. Henson managed to talk them around by saying he hit the target and it was his mistake he never checked to see that the job was complete. The bosses agreed they have a contract coming up that needs to be done and done properly. This man needs to be killed stone dead and you'll use a driver and we'll supply the gun and you return the gun back here. You will do the job for free, and afterwards, you will make plenty of money with us. The bosses have kept Henderson on for a reason. He was not connected to them in any way. He was not part of their crime circle, so keeping him to do hits may be very useful to them. Henderson agreed to do the job for free to prove his worth. It's a shop called Brookhouse Wine in Eccles. Do not hurt the old guy and shoot the shop up. And if the young guy's there, shoot him in the legs. Henson was handed a machine gun wrapped in a sheet. Now the machine gun he provided was an SA-23. It has progressive trigger for selecting between semi-automatic fire and fully automatic fire. Lightly pulling on the trigger will fire a single shot. Pulling the trigger farther back to the rear in a continuous motion will fire fully automatically until the trigger is released or the magazine is empty. The gun was originally made in 1948 to 1968. It was favoured by Lithuanian freedom fighters when the Red Army kept its advancement after World War II. Many have found their way onto the black market. Though it may be old, be under no illusion, it's well built, functioning, has devastating firepower and they last forever. But remember what I said about the progressive trigger because this will become important later on. Hence then the next day on the 4th of July 2009 at 9pm was driven to Brookhouse Supermarkets and Wines in Eccles, Greater Manchester by high getaway driver Ryan Manning in a stolen Mazda taxi. Henson took out machine gun from the paper bag and walked into the shop. He pressed the trigger and nothing. All the customers were watching in shock. Henson then pulled the trigger all the way back and the gun peppered the walls, hit the bottles beyond the counter and shot the shopkeeper three times, twice in the chest and once in the stomach. He was serving a customer at the time. CCTV showed victim Nasser Hussain, who was 27 years old, writhing around on the floor and bleeding. The customers in the shop were lying on the ground. Henson ran out of the shop and he jumped back in the blue Mazda and sped away. 
the car was torched in the woods in Wigan. Henson shot and killed Nasser Hussein, who was 27 years old. Nasser Hussein Shazad was working at the shop to earn some extra money. He had been in the country for six months and was going back home in two weeks. It was a kind of working holiday. He was not the intended target. He was an employee. Henson immediately went on the run and the gun was wiped down, wrapped in tracksuit bottoms and thrown under a parked car in Hinton Street. The next day it was reported in the news that police believed it to be an armed robbery gone wrong. When the deceased described how the gunman shot at everything. The police's thoughts that it had been an armed robbery was quickly pushed aside. There had been grown tit for tat with gangs in the area. The burnt out taxi, the Mazda, registration M239 NUK, was found burnt out on Lamburnham Avenue, Wigan, and was quickly connected to the shooting. The gun wrapped in tracksuit bottoms was later found that day by a passerby. It was sent and rushed through to forensics. The whole community was in shock at the killing and there was plenty of calls from the public. There was nothing on Henderson. DNA results had come back on the gun wrapped in the tracksuit bottoms. It was leaked forensically to the getaway driver Manning and the tracksuit bottoms matched those Henderson wore in the shooting. The gun had partial prints off both suspects and witnesses at the shop gave a matching description of Henderson. Manning was found first by police. Simeon Henderson was promptly arrested after going back to his known address. Henderson said he'd been set up. The gun they gave him, they said they knew it wouldn't work. Police asked who they were, and Henderson said he would plead guilty. But he was not going to go down for this alone. He turned supergrass and named everyone. Simeon Henson admitted to murder, two of the firearms offences and arson before testifying against his associates. He was jailed for life with a minimum of 15 years, but this has been reduced from an expected 32 years because he turned super grass. Mohamed Afiz, who was 43 years old, was jailed for life for his part in organising the fatal shooting. He must serve at least 26 years. Arthan Rafiq, who was 26 years old, supplied the murder weapon and was jailed for life with a minimum term of 18 years. Ryan Manning, who was 22 years old, the getaway driver, was convicted of manslaughter and had in a minimum term of 8 years. Akmal Afzal, who was 25 years old, was convicted of assisting an offender and a possession of a prohibited weapon and jailed for 7 years. After several men left the country, arrest warrants were put out for them. Businessman Golf and Khan, known as Gogo, -Go, was arrested two years after the shooting. After questioning and no evidence connected him to the case, he was released without charge. Officers are still trying to trace Mohammed Safdar and gang leader Tanvir Akbar. It's thought they both may have headed to Pakistan, although there have been reported sightings of Tanvir Akbar in Bolton. Simeon Henson tried to appeal his conviction in 2018, but top judges were not impressed and threw it out of court. At the end of the day, Simeon Henson pulled the trigger. <laughs>